Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we celebrate the solemnity of St. Francis. And I thought the best thing to do for the homily was, in, well, in the spirit of St. Francis, nothing fancy, but just allow our saint to speak for himself. Right? St. Francis, in his life, didn't write very much. Okay? He didn't have many things to say. But the little he did say and the little he did write were very profound and uh, very rich in meaning. And so I thought it would be appropriate if we took one of the few letters that he wrote and just uh, read through, not the whole thing, this is the letter to all the faithful, uh, but just those parts which I thought were most appropriate for inspiring us the love of God and the true spirit of our seraphic father. So this is a letter to all the faithful, which means it applies to each and every one of us. There is a part in it, which is uh, he directly addresses religious. And so we should give special attention to that. To all Christians, religious, clerics, and lay folk, men and women, to everyone in the whole world, Brother Francis, their servant and subject, sends his humble respects, imploring for them true peace from heaven and sincere love in God. I am the servant of all, and so I am bound to wait upon everyone and make known to them the fragrant words of my Lord. Realizing, however, that because of my sickness and ill and ill health, I cannot personally visit each one individually, I decided to send you a letter bringing a message with the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the word of the Father and of the Holy Spirit, whose words are spirit and life. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the glorious word of the Father, so holy and exalted, whose coming the Father made known by St. Gabriel the Archangel, to the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, in whose womb he took on our weak human nature. He was rich beyond measure, and yet he and his holy mother chose poverty. And it was the Father's will that his blessed and glorious Son, whom he gave to us and who was born for our sake, should offer himself by his own blood as a sacrifice and victim on the altar of the cross, and this not for himself, through whom all things were made, but for our sins, leaving us an example that we may follow in his steps. It is the Father's will that we should all be saved by his Son, and that we should receive him with a pure heart and chaste body but very few are anxious to receive him or want to be saved by him, although his yoke is easy and his burden light. All those who refuse to taste and see how good the Lord is and who love the darkness rather than the light are under a curse. It is God's commandments they refuse to obey, and so it is of them the prophet says, you rebuke the accursed proud who turn away from your commands. On the other hand, those who love God are happy and blessed. They do as our Lord himself tells us in the gospel. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart and with thy whole soul and thy neighbor as thyself. We must love God then and adore him with a pure heart and mind, because this is what he seeks above all else, as he tells us. True worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. All who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We should praise him and pray to him day and night, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, because we must always pray and not lose heart. And moreover, we should confess all our sins to a priest and receive from him the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The man who does not eat his flesh and drink his blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Only he must eat and drink worthily, because he who eats and drinks unworthily, without distinguishing the body, eats and drinks judgment to himself. That is, if he sees no difference between it and other food. Besides this, we must bring forth, therefore, fruits befitting repentance, and love our neighbors as ourselves. We must be charitable, too, and humble, and give alms, because they wash the stains of sin from our souls. We lose everything which we leave behind us in this world, we can bring with us only the right to a reward for our charity and the alms we have given. For these we shall receive a reward, a just retribution from God. We are also bound to fast and avoid vice and sin, taking care not to give way to excess in food and drink, and we must be Catholics. We should visit churches often and show great reverence for the clergy not just for them personally, for they may be sinners, but because of their high office, for it is they who administer the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. They offer it in sacrifice at the altar, and it is they who receive it and administer it to others. We should realize, too, that no one can be saved except by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the holy words of God. And it is the clergy who tell us his words and administer the blessed sacrament, and they alone have the right to do it, and no one else. Religious especially are bound to make greater efforts without neglecting the duties of ordinary Christians because they have left the world. Our lower nature, the source of so much vice and sin, should be hateful to us. Our Lord says in the gospel, it is from the heart of man that all vice and sin comes. And he tells us, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. We are bound to order our lives according to the precepts and counsels of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we must renounce self and bring our lower nature into subjection under the yoke of obedience. This is what we have all promised God. It is not for us to be wise and calculating in the world's fashion. We should be guileless, lowly, and pure. We should hold our lower nature in contempt as a source of shame to us, because through our own fault we are wretched and utterly corrupt, nothing more than worms, as our Lord tells us by the prophet. I am a worm, not a man, the scorn of men despised by the people. We should not want to be in charge of others. We are to be servants and should be subject to every human creature for God's sake. On all those who do this and endure to the last, the Spirit of God will rest. He will make his dwelling in them, and there he will stay, and they will be children of your Father in heaven whose work they do. It is they who are the brides, the brothers, and the mothers of our Lord Jesus Christ. A person is his bride when his faithful soul is united with Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. We are his brothers when we do the will of his Father who is in heaven. And we are mothers to him when we enthrone him in our hearts and souls by love with a pure and sincere conscience and give him birth by doing good. This, too, should be an example to others. How glorious, how holy and wonderful it is to have a Father in heaven! <clears throat> how holy it is, how beautiful and lovable to have in heaven a bridegroom! How holy and beloved, how pleasing and lowly, how peaceful, delightful, lovable, and desirable above all things it is to have a brother like this who laid down his life for his sheep and prayed to his father for us, saying, Holy Father, in your name keep those whom you have given me. Father, 
all those whom you gave me in the world were yours and you gave them to me. And the words you have given me, I have given to them. And they have received them and have known truly that I have come forth from you and they have believed that you have sent me. I am praying for them, not for the world. Bless and sanctify them. And for them I sanctify myself, that they may be sanctified in their unity, just as we are. And Father, I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my splendor in your kingdom. Every creature in heaven and on earth and in the depths of the sea should give God praise and glory and honor and blessing. He has borne so much for us and has done and will do so much good to us. He is our power and our strength, and he alone is good. He alone most high, he alone all-powerful, wonderful and glorious. He alone is holy and worthy of all praise and blessing for endless ages and ages. Amen. All those who refuse to do penance and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ are blind because they cannot see the true light, our Lord Jesus Christ. They indulge their vices and sins and follow their evil longings and desires without a thought for the promises they made. In body they are slaves of the world and of the desires of their lower nature with all the cares and anxieties of this life. In spirit, they are slaves of the devil. They have been led astray by him and have made themselves his children, dedicated to doing his work. They lack spiritual insight because the Son of God does not dwell in them, and it is he who is the true wisdom of the Father. It is of such men as these that Scripture says, their skill was swallowed up. They can see clearly and are well aware what they are doing. They are fully conscious of the fact that they are doing evil and knowingly lose their souls. See then you who are blind, deceived by your enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Our fallen nature loves to commit sin and hates to serve God. This is because vice and sin come from the heart of man, as the gospel says. You have no good in this world and nothing to look forward to in the next. You imagine that you will enjoy the worthless pleasures of this life indefinitely, but you are wrong. The day and the hour will come, the day and the hour for which you have no thought and of which you have no knowledge whatever. First sickness, then death draws near. Friends and relatives come and advise the dying man, put your affairs in order. Wife and children, friends and relatives, all pretend to mourn. Looking about, he sees them weeping. An evil inspiration comes to him. Thinking to himself, he says, Look, I am putting my body and soul and all that I have in your hands. Certainly a man who would do a thing like that is under a curse, trusting in leaving his body and his soul and all that he has defenseless in such hands. God tells us by his prophet, Cursed shall he be that puts his trust in man. There and then they call a priest. He says to the sick man, Do you want to be absolved from all your sins? And the dying man replies, I do. Are you ready then to make restitution as best you can out of your property for all that you have done, all the fraud and deceit you practice towards your fellow men? The priest asks him. No, he replies. And the priest asks, why not? Because I have left everything in the hands of my relatives and friends, is the answer. Then his speech begins to fail, and so the unfortunate man dies an unhappy death. We should all realize that no matter where or how a man dies, if he is in the state of mortal sin and does not repent, when he could have done so and did not, the devil tears his soul from his body 
with such anguish and distress that only a person who has experienced it can appreciate it. All the talent and ability, all the learning and wisdom which he thought his own are taken away from him, while his relatives and friends bear off his property and share it among themselves. Then they say, a curse on his soul. He could have made more to leave to us, and he did not. And the worms feast on his body. So he loses both body and soul in this short life and goes to hell, where he will be tormented without end. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in that love which is God, I, Brother Francis, the least of your servants and worthy only to kiss your feet, beg and implore all those to whom this letter comes to hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ in a spirit of humility and love, putting them into practice with all gentleness and observing them perfectly. Those who cannot read should have them read to them often and keep them ever before their eyes by persevering in doing good to the last because they are spirit and life. Those who fail to do this shall be held to account for it before the judgment seat of Christ at the last day. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless those who welcome them and grasp them and send copies to others if they persevere in them to the last. Thank you.